Up now, we've got offensive lineman Matt Bothhorse. I'm going to turn it over to John. John, go ahead. Matt, thank you very much for joining us this afternoon here. Uh, we're going to have a handful of questions from you from the media. What we'll do is I'll introduce them by name and media outlet, and then you can go ahead and answer. We're going to start with Trevor Groves from cutigers.com. Hey, Buck. Um, how, how much is this uh, game going to mean to you personally, going up against Ohio State, just being uh, from that state? And and I, I presume you, you know a bunch of guys on that roster um, and getting to start in this game this year. Yeah, it definitely means a lot. Obviously, we had the opportunity to play um, Ohio State last year, but I was not necessarily as big of a role on the field. So being a starter now has a little bit more motivation for this game, for sure. Anytime you get an opportunity to play a game of this caliber, I mean, it's it's a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity, and you, you can never take it for granted. And, and a lot of people want to assume, well, we could be back next year. Well, you, you never know. So to get this opportunity is really special. And and as you said, there's quite a few guys I know on, on their team and a couple of former teammates of mine as well. So really looking forward to that and, and excited for the weekend. Next will be Bill Rabinowitz from the Columbus Dispatch. Hi, Matt. Uh, I'm assuming you're going to go against uh, Tommy Togi a, a decent amount. Could you just kind of give me your impressions of him? Just strong, explosive, I would say. Um, really going to anchor down there in the middle and just – they're inside guys as a whole. I think they do a really good job. They're very well coached and it's going to be a challenge. And it's, it's definitely kind of the nature of the game. When you get to games like this, it has to be in the trenches and, and this game is no exception. And they're, they're very talented both on the inside and the outside, but specifically on the inside, obviously Haskell Garrett is, is a great talent as well. So they've got a lot to work with, but him in particular, I mean, he, he's a real plugger and, and he can give a nice bull rush as well. So Definitely going to be a, a big battle to look out for this Friday. We will now go to Scott Rabelais from the New Orleans Advocate. Matt, I, I know uh, Trevor and Travis owe, owe all their success to you guys up front, of course. But uh, how 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 have they made your jobs your jobs easier? Having you know such experienced, I mean, you guys have one of the most experienced backfields in the country, I, I would assume. Yeah, well, I would say I don't know if all of their success can be attributed to us because you're talking about two really special players and, and two guys that have made some incredible plays over the course of their careers and sometimes not exactly with all the help from the offensive line. But, yeah, it, it's, it's amazing to be able to block for two guys like that who are just so special in their own way. And Trevor, obviously a generational talent and likely number one pick, um, just to be able to play with a guy like that who's just – as great of a guy, you know, from a character perspective as well, um, is, is a real privilege. And Travis, I mean, he to be the leading rusher in the history of the ACC is is something that I don't think we can all really understand the significance of until maybe a couple years removed. Because an accomplishment like that obviously does not come around that often. And and to be a small part of that is something I take pride in. But like I said, I mean, some of the plays those guys make are absolutely incredible. And there's definitely been multiple times when I've been on the field with those guys and I've just been in awe uh, at their ability and, and just the will to win. Next will be Dan Hope from 11 Warriors. Hey, Matt, it seems like you guys have kind of found your groove running the ball in the last couple games and Ohio State's run defense has been pretty strong all year. Just what do you think has been the key to success for you guys to get your run game going and kind of what do you see in this matchup with Ohio State? Well, the biggest thing, just following the loss against Notre Dame, it was a huge emphasis and something that we really wanted to correct moving forward. Uh, wouldn't necessarily say we're just a run defense or run offense, excuse me, but at the same time, it's something that we take pride in, especially as offensive linemen. And so just getting back to the basics, really focusing on the details and, and individual drills and whatnot, and we've started to see it pay dividends, which is something that we're very happy with. And, and as you said, Ohio State has a very good – run defense and similar to Notre Dame, it's going to be a challenge. And we did what we wanted to do against Notre Dame. And so this week, same thing. It's just focusing on the details, focusing on the basics. And you can never get bored with the mundane, especially at this level of football. It's very easy. You've got extremely talented players and great coaches, but it's all in the details. And, and to play a team, a group as talented as this, we need to be on our A game with the small things and the details. So that's all I would say. It's kind of a boring answer, but it really is the truth. Next will be Zachary Brazeler from the New York Post. 
Matt, as you know, someone who's from Ohio, how, how would you describe the, the kind of the state of the rivalry? What's you know, what, what do people from your hometown think of Clemson? And you know, it's obviously become you know bigger with with everything going on, the back and forth. I mean, just but what, what from from your hometown and your vantage point, what what is the state of the rivalry with these two teams? Well, definitely when I committed to Clemson, I think a lot of people were kind of shocked. It was a little out of the box, I guess you could say, for me to go to a school like Clemson. They hadn't signed a guy from Ohio since Cole Stout, uh, which was more than five years before that. So there was definitely some weird reactions at first. Um, Obviously, the people close to me have always supported me, and it's something that I really appreciate. But on the same lines, I have a bunch of friends who go to Ohio State and a ton of guys that I went to high school with or knew otherwise. So it's definitely interesting. I think there's some bragging rights on the line, but uh, it, it's a passionate rivalry. And you're talking about two of the marquee programs in college football. And, uh, you know, we've been able to take the cake the past couple of meetings. And, and I know that they want to get over that hump. So it's a, it's a passionate rivalry. I'll say that. And Ohio state has a huge fan base and a, and a great following. So I know this is something that a lot of people take pride in and it matters to a lot of people. So if I can get some bragging rights to a couple of my buddies, then I guess that's just the benefit of it all. Next is Jacob Benj from Buckeye Grove. Hey, Matt, it was kind of noted earlier how you're an Ohio guy and whatnot, and Justin Hilliard's from the area. So I'm curious what you think of Justin. You know, he's gone through some struggles. Just what's your impressions of Justin Hilliard? Yeah, so Justin and I were teammates at St. Xavier for two years, and what an incredible athlete. I mean, he was a five-star, super highly recruited, and and it's really – been tough for Justin to go through his career and just it seems like he'd take one step forward and two steps back from the injury perspective and and he's finally getting healthy and you can see it on film I mean he is a special world-class athlete and to get his opportunity I know that he had a great game against Northwestern and like I said you just watch the tape and you know and and I really appreciate Justin and look up to him and and he's someone that I really respect like I said we were teammates for two years and got to play with, alongside one another and now the opportunity to play against one another is, is something that's special and it's not an opportunity that you get very often. So I'm really proud of Justin and, and just to see him get his opportunity and stick it out for six years uh, is longer than most. And so I think it's really paying off for him and, and he's having the type of season that he could have envisioned. We will now go to David Hood from TigerNet.com. Hey, Buck, I was doing a a radio show last night and somebody was asking me, what is Clemson's motivation now? They're favorite in this game. They they are the guys that are, you know, considered to be one of the top programs in the country. Where does the motivation come from? Obviously, a national title's out there and and, and all that. But for this group of guys, what has been your main motivation this year? And what keeps you going through this stupid COVID season? I think that something Coach Sweeney has done a great job instilling in all of us is having an intrinsic motivation. And it's not external factors. As you mentioned, yes, the national championship is something that we have our sights set on uh, every year. And we've been able to get there and and win. But also last year, we did not get the job done. So there's a lot of external factors and things that could give you emotion. But sometimes emotion can can work against you if it's misplaced. And, And so really, it's an intrinsic motivation internally to see how good can I be as a player and how good can we be as a team? And same thing unit by unit as an offensive line unit, how good can we be? And in order to find that out, you have to give it everything you have every day in preparation and film study and in the weight room, everything matters and adds up to see how good can I personally be and how good can we be? And so that's what it comes down to. And really, obviously this is a high profile game. The, college football playoff this is where everyone wants to be but we should be no more no more motivated to play this game than we should week one or week five because at the end of the day every week's the best of one and especially at this level of college football the margin for error is extremely small and we did have the one loss versus Notre Dame and still got in but but sometimes I mean after that loss you're looking at you have to win out to get in and so the motivation has to be there internally every week and no one can force you to be motivated and no one can force you to care. But I think we have a group of guys on this team that care about one another and they care about seeing the potential of this team come to fruition. So it's all internal, it's intrinsic and the best is the standard and best. How good is your best personally? So 
that's what it comes down to, and, and that's something that Coach Sweeney's done a great job instilling in us, like I said. Thank you very much for the time here this afternoon, Matt. We'll let you get back to preparations now, and uh, hope you have a good trip down to New Orleans in a couple days. Thanks, guys. Next up, we've got tight end Braden Galloway. John, I'm going to turn it over to you. Thank you very much, and uh, thanks for joining us this afternoon, Braden. Uh, we're going to go to a few questions from the media for you. I will introduce them by name and media outlet, uh, and we will get started in one second. Please listen carefully. We have somebody. Can we have somebody mute that? If you are a physician, physician. Thank you. Sorry about that. I think we got that line muted. Uh, once again, do we have any questions for Braden Galloway? We'll start with David Hale from ESPN. Hey, Braden. Uh, I'm, I'm curious this year, uh, as the team has kind of been um, maybe the target of a little more criticism outside of the program than years past, I think that comes with a lot of the success that you guys have had that you know, you win every year and people start getting tired of seeing you and start seeing things in a little different light. Um, do you guys sort of embrace that role of being the, you know, sort of hated target nationally that, that Alabama or even Ohio State maybe has been for a long time? Uh, or does it bother you to kind of hear some of that criticism from folks outside the program? Um, we don't focus on anything that's outside of the program. We focus on, you know, trying to be the best version of Clemson that we can be. Um, and it's not really about, you know, what, you know, the media is saying or what, you know, outside sources are saying because we know, you know, who we are. We're a tight-knit group. It's Clemson family for a reason. And we just continue to try to work on that and continue being ourselves. Like, I was over here and Matt saying how, you know, motivation has to be intrinsic and, and so does so does the leadership, so does the love for one another um, and not focusing on, you know, what other people are saying because that's the quickest way to, to break up a team. And you just have to learn how – to embrace your target, um, and obviously, we are one of the one of the best programs in college football. So we know we're going to get everybody's best, no matter who we're playing. So we have to prepare that way. Um, we have to perform that way. We have to uh, watch film that way. We have to practice that way. Um, so we know we're gonna, we're getting everybody's best. So we have to do our job um, for those who are coming after us, for those who have come before us, um, to continue doing what we can do to be the best version of Clemson that we can be. Next is Trevor Groves from cutigers.com. Hey, Braden. Obviously, uh, last year you are coming off the suspension uh, in the playoff. I, I don't think you had any catches against Ohio State. You had one against LSU. But just how much does, it, does this mean to you personally to, to be able to have a big role uh, in this moment? Um, yeah, I, I'm looking at it like it's any other game. Um, you know, I'm trusting in our coaches and in our, uh, in our support staff and in our players. Uh, we're, we'll have a great plan, um, and, you know, whatever happens, happens. Um, as far as, you know, whether I'm involved in the passing game or any of that, uh, I'm just trying to be the best version of myself that I can be um, for this team and do anything that I can to help this team win. Man, I think a lot of our players have that mindset, and I think that's why we'll continue to be successful. Next is Nathan Baird from Cleveland.com. Hey, Braden, just curious if there's anything this season from – being on the field more, playing with Travis Etienne more, that you have maybe um, th that has impressed you more that you've actually now that you're actually able to play side by side with him. Anything that has has um, kind of elevated your opinion of him this season? Um, I would probably say my opinion of his speed. I always knew he was fast, but then you get out there, and I like to think of myself as kind of fast. And when you're running beside him, it's just like it's not the same at all. Um, that was probably the biggest thing. Um, obviously, watching him on TV or watching him from the sideline, you know, he looks very fast. But when you're on the field with him and he's running, it's just a different kind of speed um, that he brings. And um, you see why he's such an explosive player. We'll now go to Andrew Adelson from the ACC Network. I remember last year um, after the LSU loss uh, inside that, that stadium in the locker room, Trevor went around to all the teammates and said, you know, we'll, we'll be back. And now you're going to be back in New Orleans to try and win a championship. What do you remember about um, the locker room and, and Trevor doing that and kind of now being able to go back to the place um, to get a, a national championship in the same place where you lost it last year? 
Yeah, I think the I think the story was kind of already written, um, you know, beforehand. I think it was a, obviously this is a great opportunity for us and the team, um, but it has like that 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 fairy tale kind of story headline. Um, you know, we're going back to the same place we lost um, in order to try to get to back to where we were last year. Um, and I, yeah, I think it's a great opportunity. Um, obviously, Trev's a great leader. Um, it, we have confidence in him. He has confidence in us. And that, I think that's why we're so successful. But when he said last year that we'll be back, um, there was nobody on our team that was doubting that. Um, and so I think we just put our head down. We went to work. Um, and then, you, you know, you look up even through the midst through a pandemic and all this stuff. Um, we're right where we want to be at this time of the year. Next is Lawton Swan from ClemsonSportsTalk.com. Hey, Braden. Uh, just thinking about your position and Tony Elliott's ability to utilize you guys, what are his strengths as an offensive coordinator in your mind and just the success that you guys have had offensively uh, throughout his tenure? Oh, yeah. I think he's, I think he's versatile. And I think he's very confident. I think those are two things, um, not only as, you know, offense coordinator, as a player, pretty much whatever you're doing, I feel like those are those are the biggest keys to be versatile and to be confident, um, and that's obviously what he does. He has great great play calls. He has great preparation, um, and you know he can get really anybody the ball in any kind of way. Um, so I think that's where the versatile comes from. And then obviously you're confident in what you do. We're confident in our day one install. We're confident in everything we put in through fall camp, um, and we trust when we run that that we'll be successful doing that. So. Our final question will come from Patrick Murphy with 24-7 Sports. Braden, Ohio State's used a few different guys defensively to match up with tight ends throughout the year, be it linebacker, slot corner, safety. Just from watching on film, what do you see um, from how they've defended the tight end and, and how you attack that? Um, yeah, I mean, obviously they're linebackers, they're banded backers, they're, they're, very, they're very athletic, um, they're good in space, they're good in coverage. They also play the run very well, so... Um, they have a lot of different guys that, you know, cover the tight end specifically, uh, depending on what personnel uh, formations you're in. Um, but, you know, all of them are very capable um, in being successful in the running in the pass game. So you definitely have to, you know, prepare well, you know, see their tendencies, see what they're good at, see what they're weaker at, um, and try to attack them that way. Thank you very much for your time, Braden. Uh, we'll let you get back to preparations and uh, look forward to seeing you in a few days here in New Orleans. Thank you.